Um, I have a lot of th I have a lot of thoughts on my mind. I just want to. I guess I'll just try to talk as um, unrestricted as I can. I was on Instagram before, a couple seconds ago. We all know this Ukraine stuff is going on. I really don't have that much investment in it. Um, whatever. I really I like that at that. I don't have much investment in the situation. And it feels like reality is just stacking on top of itself. It feels like other people's experiences are like coming to me, but like later. It's like everything is manifesting on top of itself. Because I'm right now, I'm in my house. Only people I interact with are my family members. It has been that way for months. I've not been in the public school system. And uh but even even besides that, like I'm on my phone, I'm on my iPad. And I'm starting to see this Ukraine stuff. You know, first I heard people talking about the normies, you know, posting Ukraine flags. Because the, the mainstream media and the State Department tells them to. And, you know, I'm seeing more and more of it. I'm just getting annoyed. And I'm not getting annoyed because because of necessarily support for Ukraine. Um, but just the, the, the pure essence of people being so programmable by the corrupt um mainstream media and state department and this sounds like I'm, I'm being i'm talking about politics here i am but that's not really what i'm uh, that's not really what I'm, what I'm getting at it's just it's weird to me how i i've heard, had conversations with people online talking about oh the normies are like um are supporting the current thing and they're posting ukrainian flags and i just go on instagram i'm uh, i go on instagram and I see, what do I see? Like, it's like a Batman thing. Like someone has a Batman costume, but they put like the um, the blue and yellow Ukrainian flag inside of it. And it's like, I don't know, um, it's bothered me. And like I said, it's not, it's not the political aspect of it. It's just seeing how easily programmable people are is, is bothering me. Um, oh, but then again, like you could say I'm being a hypocrite because um subconsciously I know there are other people who have already talked about how other people are programmable and there are other people who who have already talked about how the masses are are uh, talking about Ukraine but but I don't know it's like I just this moment feels so weird right now and um I'm really feeling the NPC thing and I know I know Instagram is controlled by algorithm and you know the NPCs are obviously going to get to the top because they're the most assimilated to the um the system and what the ideas that it promotes um but it's not even just that like i was on i was on uh discord and i was looking through my friends list yesterday and i see i see people um like with ukrainian flags in their bio and it's just weird to me because It's like there's like a feedback, like there's a delay. There's a delay between like the um, hearing hearing it manifest in other, other people's lives and hearing it like from a distance. And then I'm seeing it in my own personal lives. You know, like a few weeks ago, I was hearing about, like maybe a month ago, you know, I heard someone talk about, oh, we're going to get nuked. Then after that, I hear people start talking about Ukraine and the normies' opinion on Ukraine. Uh, but now it's like, it's, it's finally reached me personally where I go, not personally, personally, but like personally whereas i see it on my my phone on my social media on uh you know the social media accounts of the people who, who i have interacted with and it's still weirding me out i've been calm I'm, i've been contemplating many things for the past the past few minutes like i'm doing the schoolwork and literally i'm at dissonance because i'm doing the schoolwork i don't plan on going to college I don't care about my high school graduation. I'm I'm doing it for mainly to appease my parents. But like I'm doing all this work. I'm doing all this work on this computer and I literally don't care about it. I know that once I get the degree, once I finish the work, if that happens, which it most likely will, I'm going to get the paper from the school. My one of my parents is probably going to pick it up. I'm going to get my high school graduation paper. I will never use this piece of paper. And uh, I know that beforehand. And ultimately, the piece of paper won't make much of a difference in my life. But at the same time, for some reason, I feel, feel I feel like I have to catch up on the schoolwork. 
but it's like, why? Why do I have to catch up on it? And I know like, oh, well, yeah, your parents are telling you to do it. So that's why that's part of it. But it's like me, I have this personal inclination to catch up on the schoolwork as if I'm missing out on something. Like literally, if I really, if I really wanted to, I could just tell my parents, like, I don't care about this. I'm not doing this. I wouldn't do that because it's, it's, it's rebellious, but I could if I really wanted to. But it's like, there's a desire to do that, but I, I'm not willing to. And, um. I spent hours yesterday working on the schoolwork and it literally doesn't matter. I'm just thinking about humans. I'm thinking about like willfulness and what we can and cannot do. Why is it that? I do know there's layers to, to the human experience. I do know that um, free will is a flawed concept, um, but still I experience it on a, on a personal level um, like this. It's so like real reality itself is just um very 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 interesting. But this Ukraine stuff, man, it's it's people are really, you know, people talk about oh, you know, it's it's pretentious or to say normie an NPC, but it's like the way people are are people this easily programmable. I mean, here's what I believe is happening with the Ukraine thing, right? We have. And I'm not talking about like motive. I'm not, I'm not going to try to explain Russia's motivation or why Russia is like justified. I'm sure you've heard that already. Um, but like, here's, here's one, what I'm understanding from the Ukraine thing. So you have two countries who have a conflict of interest. And now one of the, one of the countries is getting dom physically dominated right now. And the response from the average American citizen um, as a result of, of, of being fed um, the story by the media and you know just personal emotions the response is oh uh bad things are happening to people in ukraine that's not i don't like that so therefore i must now post you you uh, ukraine flags and I'm, i must now stand with, with the with the country of U ukraine because i've i have observed that the experience of the ukrainian people is not a pleasant experience and, and that being killed in, in a war is not pleasant that's not good so therefore i i stand with ukraine and it's like how do It's, it's how how do how are people so how are people so simple how are people, and like I said I'm not even at, I'm not invested in the situation I could barely tell you what's going on right now, I'm aware that Russia has some justifiable interests, is what people say, um, but you know, I don't know I'm just experiencing it on a personal level like I was really on Instagram, I go on Instagram I'm seeing this Ukraine stuff and it's like oh my goodness it's like am I living in, am I living in a simulation and it's like observing this reality, you know. Simulation, the idea that we're living in a simulation is stupid and it's retarded. But the more the more the more I see the NPCs and how programmable people are, I can kind of understand more why people would believe we're living in a simulation because it's just all it's like all it's all it's like consistent, like the same things happen over and over again. Uh, like the Bible says, there's nothing new under the sun, but really experiencing that on a personal level and um it's just it's just different. Um, I just spilled some coffee on my lip. This could work. This is weird. Uh, I wish, and it's another, it's another thing I was thinking about too, how language is, language is a means and it's not the end. Meaning, um, there is meaning not the word meaning, but there is meaning and there is the language, which, um, which is a mere re representation of meaning. So I will use, I will use, um, I will make a representation and represent what this representation that I'm talking about. So if we use a square to re represent meaning itself, okay, okay. we use a square to represent meaning itself. I'll draw lines to show that there's a connection. Language is is a mere, is a mere, ex, not even extension really, but it's a mere. It's a means to, to um get to kind of describe this, but it's the, the language itself is not. It's not. It's not where meaning is. It's not where meaning is is based in. Language is a, ex, not extension, but it's a means to communicate language. 
And I was thinking about this and I was thinking about how we're, we're designed in the image of God and um, the things we can and cannot do are largely determined by God. You cannot fly and that is because God has not given you wings and you cannot read people's minds because God did not give you that ability. You can gauge what people are thinking, but that's not real. When I say that, I literally mean you can't like you can't read someone's thoughts, right? But anyways, so I was thinking like, what if what if God had given us? I'm not saying like what if He has done this? He hasn't done this, but I'm saying like theoretically, you know, um, what if God had given us an, an ability to for language to be more precise? Um, so. Think about, I'll make a comparison between between what I'm talking about and something that's understandable. So think of a 2D cartoon, a very like a very simple 2D cartoon, like pixel art, like black and white pixel art, and liken that to the way language is right now. What if instead of it being a simple pixel art, black and white, imagine if it was a high definition, uh, ray tracing, uh, enhanced shading kind of thing. Imagine if language was on a, some higher level where we could communicate meaning um m more intricately i'm not saying like that the, um, you can't communicate meaning more int intricately than we usually do but imagine if it was like that um you know would a lot of the problems we have be less prevalent like would would people be wiser right because knowledge there's there's a correlation between knowledge and virtue I'm not saying that they're one or the other the, or that they're the same thing. They're obviously different. But I think, like, knowing more doesn't necessarily make you more virtuous. But in being virtuous, you will seek more. Maybe not even seek, but you'll just, as a result of being more virtuous, you'll you will gain more knowledge. And also, as a result of having more knowledge, you will, you will be, in some cases, be more inclined to be more virtuous. Um. And an example of that would be, you know, the gospel, the gospel of Christianity. Um, for example, Africa, okay? Um, people going to Africa and spreading the gospel to, to Africans. Um, as a result of, of gaining that knowledge of the gospel, they're more inclined to be virtuous, i.e. become Christian. So that would be an example of that. But anyways, you know, what if language as we know it, is, is it true that if language were, you know, like in language now to this 2D black and white pixel art if we if we if language if god had made language more intricate and, and a more more powerfully connected to meaning itself um would this would society theoretically be more virtuous i don't know if what i'm saying is being understood well but that that's the thing that's the irony of it i don't know if what i'm saying is being understood well because language is is limited I um have a spirit. My spirit can understand meaning, not meaning entirely. I don't know all the meaning of everything. That'd be only God does. But my spirit under knows certain truths that understand certain meanings. And like, what if it's just interesting to think about? Like, what if language was like higher? Um, could our society be more virtuous? Um, and I think language. When I think of wisdom, and I think of like winning souls. Um, in in relation to to the gospel of Jesus Christ, uh, one thing I, I largely think about is language because your ability, and I don't want to promote I don't want to promote like like um taking on vain words and language to to win people over, but I think um the wiser you are, your language will be a, a byproduct of that, and the wiser you are, the more the more high definition your language will become. And I don't mean like fancier words, but I mean um, the more freely and, and effortlessly you can closely convey the meaning um, more accurately of what you know. So you, two people can know something, but one of them who has more wisdom, even if they have, they have the same IQ, they know they use they know the same words. So one of them doesn't actually have to know more uh, intellectual words than the other. Uh, if one's wiser, it's likely that they can convey the meaning of what they know to be true better. Um, and I think that's the, that's the mistake, um, intellectuals make is the opposite of that. They think, um, in observing that, that wise people tend to be able to use language in, in a way that's such that 
um, people understand what they know. Uh, I think people try to do it in the in the reverse order, whereas they think, oh, if I learn a bunch of language and fancy words and whatnot, then then I will be able to convince people of what I know to be true, or then I will be as a result of that um, smarter. And I I I, I um, hesitated to say the word smart because wisdom and being smart and wise are two completely different things, but. I don't know, I just had to, um... There's my phone in here, it's my phone in this room. I really wish I could show you the, um, the thing I saw on Instagram. I know it's not crazy, like we all know what, we all know the stuff that's going on with Ukraine right now and how people are um, being programmed to basically become Ukrainian advocates. Um, this really is, this, this really is the current thing. Like a year ago, who was think who was thinking about Ukraine a year ago? I'm not saying no one was thinking about that because obviously it's a place that exists with people there, so obviously people had to be thinking about it for some reason. But in the sense we're thinking about Ukraine right now, it's like, isn't it weird how it's like almost like, um, uh, it's like witchcraft. Um, witchcraft is is real. The Bible speaks of witchcraft. And witchcraft um, constitutes more things than people think it does. Uh, most people would think witchcraft would just be um, ma magical spells that, that aren't really uh, specifically, like, not, not specific, just the vague idea. The vague, People think of the word witchcraft as the vague idea of magical spells. But anyways, concerning witchcraft, it's like language itself... Language itself is like it's it's like some form of wizardry. It's like some form of um, manipulation. Language itself. I'm not even talking about like people using that language manipulatively. That's part of it. But I'm just talking about the, the mere fact that we can can convey meaning and change change reality change reality with uh, words. I'm not saying language is witchcraft because I think the word witchcraft has a negative connotation. Um, it, there's definitely something powerful about language. And this is this is bringing my, my my brain back to Genesis. Um, we all know we all know in Genesis. I have the scripture right here. Happened, and God said, "Let there be light," and there was light. God s spoke, spoke, spoke reality as we know it into existence. And you know, it's it's weird how that scene is preposterous, but we do we do that not on the same extent. We don't speak and matter appears. I'm I don't, I'm sure none of us. Uh, at least people watching this video don't don't have that ability, but on a smaller scale we do that, right? We 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 speak, and it cha it changes reality itself. The mere f the mere fact of us speaking changes reality, and there's it's very a very very powerful. Um, it's kind of easy to look over that. I think I think we we once you learn how to speak you learn how to speak when you're like two what two or three maybe I don't know when you I don't know when babies learn how to speak but you kind of get the ability to speak from a young age your language kind of um, increases in, in a potential I guess and and in articulacy but you don't really notice because it's happening gradually um, and then you just speak every day and you don't think of anything of it but I think it's it's um, language is a very interesting thing and one of the the, the many reasons um, I know God to be real it's um, There's the physical, there's a physical aspect of, of reality um, and all the matter around us having design, pointing to the designer, which would be God. There's that aspect, but something even, and it's like in everything to like something as simple as the fact that I can, I can move my mouth and change reality. There's no way something that like convoluted and something that intricate could exist by accident. The mere ability to even speak. Um, so... And that's, you know, you see that in my whole YouTube channel. And I'm not, it's not about me, but I'm just using my channel as an example. You know, why do people watch my YouTube videos? Because I speak in them. So something that you could write off as meaningless, oh, sounds and syllables, which the sounds and syllables themselves are pretty meaningless. But the, the meaning I'm conveying with wor using words is meaningful. And that's why people, there are a few people who watch my YouTube videos because humans are interested in meaning. And... That, that that whole phenomenon right there kind of destroys the whole nihilistic 
a black pill worldview, which is that everything's meaningless because our mere, our, ever, our everyday existence is, is full of meaning inherently. Um, you couldn't even, perception itself is a meaningful event. So to perceive everything is meaningless, self-defeating. Um, uh, but I'm going off on a tangent. Um, maybe I'll, I'll maybe keep the video at 25 minutes. <clears throat> but all this stuff, there's something to all, all of this stuff. Um, meaning, language, um, knowledge, wisdom. And it, it does remind me of in Genesis as well, where I'm not going to look for the page. I'm in Genesis, but I'm not going to look for the exact page. Maybe I can. Um, no, I don't need to look for the page because we've all heard this before. How a big part of the downfall of humanity from Adam and Eve was had to do with knowledge itself, the very phenomenon of knowledge. Yes, it was the tree of, of uh, what's it, evil? or I, I believe it was the tree of good and evil, right? So you, there's the good and evil aspect playing into the downfall of humanity. But it was it was knowledge. Um, like Ty Lopez says, maybe I should find the verse because I have 20. I plan maybe to go for 25 minutes. <sighs> um, okay. Okay, yes. Um, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. So is the, the knowledge of good and evil. So that's different. That's dis distinct from a knowledge itself. Because knowledge, knowledge and the knowledge of good and evil, those are ones more specific. But, you know, it's... Um, I don't know. I don't. I don't know. I mean, this is the, this is the irony. I've talked earlier about how language is limited, and what if language was more, was more. Um, you know, if language is like two D pixel art right now, what if language was more three dimensional, and more precise? Um, and I have I have stuff in my mind right now that I can't articulate because language can only do so much. I mean, I guess I could articulate some of it. Obviously, I've been talking for twenty two minutes, so I haven't I haven't articulated nothing. Um, but I don't know. I just wanted to, um, it's kind of annoying, honestly. Um, it sounds like I'm, um, it sounds like I'm just like talking just to talk, but I really, a big part of it right now is I just don't have all the words to describe everything that's on my mind. Even if I could somehow manage to bring myself to speak freely because whenever a person does speak, there is this this ability, not ability, but there is this um, inclination to, to filter yourself. And I do that um, whenever I speak. Even in a video like this, I'm doing that to some extent. I'm not going to speak. I'm not going to just spew words out of my mind carelessly. I don't even know if I could do that if I wanted to, because there's such a inclination not to. Um, and then if... Um, the battery thing went on the screen. Um, but then if I wanted to, right? But the mere fact of me wanting to speak with, without um, without inhibition, wouldn't that change the words that are coming to my mind? Like, I think if I tried, like, if I said to myself, okay, so just speak without inhibition. More random, irrelevant words and meaning, meaningless, like, words. Not, yeah, meaningless words would come into my mind. And therefore, so could you even could you even speak everything on your mind if you wanted to even if you if you're willing to do it with all the words you knew and all the words that came to your mind, could you even do it if you wanted to? But yeah, that Ukraine that Ukraine stuff was um. I really didn't think I would make a video about the Ukraine stuff, and this this doesn't I don't know if that counts as that, but it's like a virus that has reached me. It's like okay, the Ukraine stuff came irrelevant. I was like, okay, I'm like, I'm not gonna. I don't. There's no need to talk about this because it's like, oh, this is like what you're. This is what you're supposed to be talking about. But now I've talked about it. Is that what would the state? Would the State Department and the mainstream media would they be happy with the fact that I talked about what, what Ukraine? 
and I'm probably not gonna go on for an hour. I've made hour video, I've made hour talks before, but they um, I don't know, it's just too much. I really want to keep the content rather short. Um, but this video hasn't been short. It's gone on for 25 minutes, so it's like at the same time, I really don't care. I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna stop myself right here because I think I've said enough. I really articulated mainly what I wanted to articulate though, which was my 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 um question about language, which was that. You know, imagine like what if language was more my comparison, which I'll say again, if language right now is like 2D black and white pixel art, what if language was more like 3D, um, extremely well rendered um, shaders video game or something like that? Just more more high definition, you know, how, how different would reality be? How different would our um, ability to perpetuate ideologies and and um, truths and lies? the people how different would things be but i've gone on long enough i think i'm done um i'm drinking some coffee my coffee is cold i'm out of here